So now we are about to hear from Mama BC, the master trainer, training us regarding projects. Remember that she is the global GTA projects coordinator. So she is very, very special to us. And she has come now to continue the training that we are receiving. Mama BC, the Lord bless you. Over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as the case may be, wherever we are on the globe. I want to once again appreciate the King of Glory, the owner of life, the giver of life, the sustainer of life for this great opportunity. Uh, I want to thank God for who he is, who he has been, and who will forever be. I want to appreciate the leadership of the winning women, the leadership of the GTA. I want to appreciate you, the coordinators of Noon Our Nourish. You are doing a beautiful job, and I pray that the Lord God of heaven will be with us in Jesus' name. I want to appreciate every project coordinator in the Willing Women Move or, or the GTA. I want to appreciate everyone in the move of the Willing Women. Thank you and thank God for what he's doing in us and thank God because his purpose will be accomplished and his name will forever be glorified. I pray that that which God is doing, using you to do, will be permanent and impact will be created in Jesus' name. This day, we are still continuing on the teaching of projects. And like uh, I keep on saying, uh, the director of this teaching is just the Holy Spirit. And whatever he says, we do. But I believe that he's leading us somewhere and by his grace, we are getting to a destination of his purpose in Jesus' name. I want us to bow our heads as we ask the Holy Spirit to take over. Let's just tell the Holy Spirit to take over. Let it not be by man. Let it not be for man. Let it be by God for him, for his glory, for his purpose to be accomplished, for his name to be greatly glorified. Let that which he's doing in this season impact our lives so that we can create better impacts in the world. Let it, re let it reshape our thinking so that our, our, I mean, the purpose of God, the destinies we carry can be fulfilled. I believe we are praying, Father, that is our desire, that that which you are doing in this season, we bring glory unto you, that it will be by you, it will be for you, and it will be unto you. All glory will be unto you. The benefit will be for man. And you and you alone will be glorified. Father, we pray, Lord, that this will not just be by hearing alone, but that it will reshape in our lives. It will reshape in our understanding. It will make us more impactful. And it will bring greater glory unto you. Father, that in no distance time, Lord, your name, Lord, will greatly be glorified. Father, we bow unto you this morning or this day, and we ask you to have your way. Thank you, bless everything, man, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Last week, by the special grace of God, we looked at identification of God's cronies in our hearts, how to identify the cronies of God in our hearts so that we can understand the echoes of his crony and in such a way that it can be translated to activities that will benefit mankind. Today, we want to look at, uh, by the special grace of God, I, it, it is not my design. I just want us to understand that it is just not my design. Uh, I, I, I believe, and I, I say categorically, that these are the things that are ministered by the Holy Spirit. Uh, so this morning, we want to look at, one, what 
at the purposes of God or what is the purpose of GTA project? What is the purpose of GTA project? Uh, and then knowing the purpose of GTA project, we are going to look at the, the place of guidance and the place of the Holy Spirit in the in, in the GTA project. Uh, I, if, I want somebody to read for us from the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3. And I will be glad if somebody can read verse 7, 8, 9, 10. Ephesians 3, verses 7, 8, 9, 10. Ephesians 3 from the New King James Version of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power, purpose of the mystery. To me, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And to me, all see what the fellowship of the mysteries, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Christ, to Jesus Christ. To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church of the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. Uh, verse 11 says, according to the external purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, as I read through this scripture on my own, the Holy Spirit gave me this topic, purposes or purpose of GTA projects. And it, it directed my attention to what uh, is very important and that every one of us as uh, GTA members, willing women members, whatever we do as Christian, purpose must first be understood. We must understand purpose. And the question this morning is that We've been hearing, oh, project, project. Our leaders in GTA, they have been telling us, submit your project, submit your project. What are the purposes of GTA projects? And as I read through this scripture, Paul talking here said to me, who oh, I am least than the least of all the saints. This grace was given to me that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. The unsearchable riches of Christ. One of the greatest purposes of GTA projects is to make man in whatever environment, in whatever sphere we are, to understand the unsearchable riches of Christ Jesus, the unsearchable riches of Christ Jesus, to make man to understand the fact that the riches of God are beyond man and they cannot be searched. Whatever we do in GTA projects is expected to point to the riches of Christ. And you know that the riches of Christ does not stop with a uh, uh, provision of, does not stop with mere physical provisions. It goes down to the his death. So it goes down to, you know, the riches of Christ, the riches, the riches, the unsearchable riches of Christ speaks importantly of his love. And so one of the things that characterizes GTA project is the love of Christ that cannot be such. The love that 
is not uh, is not reciprocal. The love that is not conditional. The love that is not as a result of oh, this person did this or this person did not do that. Love that came, you know, from a heart that groaned from a heart that that is that is sacrificial from a heart that is prepared to lay down his life for others the unsearchable riches of god's of of, of the unsearchable riches of christ which is based and embedded in his love for man so every gta project is supposed to, I mean, manifest, magnify, you know, expose, explain. I don't know the words to use again. The unsearchable riches of Christ, which is his love. So it must come from the heart of love. It must come from the heart of sacrifice. It must come from the heart of of. Uh, 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 the heart of being crucified with Jesus. That is it. Like we know, unlike worldly projects, GTA projects are not for show. They are not for gain for uh, me, uh, gainful ends to the individual. They are not targeted at benefits for the executors of the project. It is not what you do to get something. It is what you do for Christ to be glorified. It is what you do for Christ to be seen. It is what you do for God to be known better. So it is one great aim of GTA project this morning, as I have said, as the Holy Spirit has ministered to me, is that man should be made to understand and to see the unsearchable riches of Christ. The unsearchable riches of Christ, which is embedded in the love of Christ. Whatever Christ came to the world to do, whatever Christ did, whatever Christ is doing now, whatever he will do in future, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, its intercession for the for us, it is all as a result of his love. So it is unsearchable. It is not something that can be comprehended. So when you do a TTA project, one of the things that you should that that it should be is to make people the 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 people that are benefiting from it. It should make them to to see that oh. Jesus is really loving. You should make them to understand that, no, this is a loving God. When you do projects that does not show the love of Christ, it is not fulfilling a GTA project. So the unsearchable riches of, uh, 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 the unsearchable riches of Christ, the love that is unsearchable, the love that cannot be comprehended, the light that passed through the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it. That is number one. Number two, we are, still, we are picking there from the, uh, 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 from the scripture that the Lord gave to me. They are targeted at making man see the glory of God in a situation. You know, at making man to see what? The glory of God. That is the untag I mean, the unsearchable riches of Christ. Making man to see God's glory in a situation. And uh, let me direct our attention to uh, a, 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 a project who, uh, like when the young woman or the young girl who was a maid in the in the house of a big man, a field masha in the army, when he when she introduced her God to Nama, 
it was not for her benefit. It was to advertise God. It was to advertise the God of Israel. It was to make him understand that the God of Israel is not discriminating. The God of Israel is ready to do it for you. All you need to do is to, is to align with him. And the glory of God was seen. The name of God was glorified. We did not hear about the guy again, but we kept on. Every day you read the Bible and you read that story, you see the glory of God. When you do a project, it is not a one-off thing. It is something that people must, understand, must see. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Secondly, they aim at the, that's the, pro, the, the, the GTA project, they aim at bringing man into fellowship with God. Praise the Lord. GTA projects are, should aim at bringing man into what? Into fellowship with God. When we, when we, when we plan a GTA project, one of the things we look we should look at is how we this draw man to God. It is aimed at bringing man into fellowship with God. If man is not brought into fellowship with God, then the purpose of God for a project is not fulfilled. They aim at bringing man into fellowship with the king of glory. That is, projects are means of evangelism. Projects are means of repentance. Projects are ways of drawing people nearer to the God of heaven. Projects are not just for unbelievers. There are many believers in the church that are not fulfilling the purpose of God. There are, many, there are many people who are born again, but have lost value of Christianity. Projects can be targeted towards them. Whatever project we do must draw man closer to God, must bring man into fellowship with God, must aim. Am I saying that uh, when you do a project, everybody uh, uh, that uh, uh, you go to, we come, we become a Christian. No, that is not what I am saying. It is God that does the work of conviction. But what I am saying is that project should be targeted at bringing man into fellowship with God. That is why God will take us to that place. But that is why project is not a one-off thing. That is why project should have a follow-up. You know, you just don't do a project. Oh, we thank God. 20 people got born again. People were happy. In fact, they praised the Lord. In fact, we raised wedding women among them. And then you go home and nothing is done. No, it should establish a fellowship. When uh, uh, Peter, uh, pardon me, I think it's Peter and John now, they got to the gate and saw the man, uh, the blind man, that man was looking onto them for coins. They said, silver and gold we don't have, but what we have we give unto you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the man walked. The scripture that followed it showed us that that man went into the temple. Praise the Lord. The man did what? He went into the temple. The blind man that was healed went about talking about Jesus. So it is aimed at bringing people into fellowship with Christ. It is aimed at bringing a relationship be between man and God or strengthening the relationship between man and God. Whether it is a project in the family sphere, in the media, whether it is a combination of spheres project, whatever the project is, you should aim at bringing man into a relationship with God. Either bringing man freshly into a relationship with God or strengthening the relationship of man with God. I want to say again, categorically, that wedding women 
GTA projects are not targeted at you who is doing it. They are many times not targeted at even the Wailing Women group. Oh, my, look, we have to be careful. And there's a need to be very, very careful. A need to be very, very careful. We should not allow greed. We should not allow covetousness. When there's a project that is to be done, maybe, maybe I'm just giving an example. Maybe God says, oh, let all, I mean, God puts it in the heart of some people and say, uh -huh. now you have to go and distribute maybe clothing or uh, get indig I mean, indigent children and send them to school or organize a school for indigent children so that they can, ah, you now say, yes, yeah, so it is not only uh, in the society that we have indigent people, even in wailing women, let us speak ourselves. That is not what God is talking about because the purpose of that project is not because it's not just to train those children. It is to draw them unto God. When God wants to bless you as a willer, as a GTA member, when God wants to bless you as a member of a sphere, he knows how to reach you. He knows how to reach you. Let us stop diverting godly projects to our selfish aim. That I, I am talking as busy, please. I am not talking as authority, but that is the way I feel about it. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Uh, then GTA, the aim at bringing man into fellowship. Yes, we have then provide, proving that God, God's, God fellowships with his beloved ones. That is one of the things that we should be, that GTA project should prove that God is still in fellowship, that there is still a way man reaches God and God reaches man. Some people have lost hope. Some people don't even believe in this God. It is your project, not your preaching, that we attract them unto God, that we make them to know that, ah, yes, God, God still speaks. God still talks. God still remembers his people. You have not gone to some people and after you, you, they break down in tears and they begin to say, I don't know that I can be remembered. Me? How did God remember me? That is the kind of thing that God is looking for. Bringing man into fellowship with God. Making man to understand that God still fellowship with man. Then they must aim at declaring the manifold wisdom of God in this perverse world. The, the project must aim at declaring the manifold wisdom of God in this perverse world. When we do projects, we must stay away from compromise. When we do projects, we must allow projects to show that God has wisdom, and that the wisdom of God is in different ways. The manifold wisdom of God must be shown in this perverse world. That is why we are going to talk about how the Holy Spirit guides and what we should do in the place of the Holy Spirit. That's where we are going to right now, because you cannot do projects by your decision. You cannot do projects. You can have a groan in your heart. But that groan, that's why uh, Mama Ruth Lawrence is very, very passionate about incubating uh, 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 echoes. Because if echoes are not well incubated, it is possible and most probably possible that projects will be done, but the manifold wisdom of God will not be seen. Projects should target at people understanding that this can only be God. And that is where we don't use our human reasoning, when we don't calculate by our, by our reasoning. One of the reasons why projects will not be projects is that as well as we, we do a lot of calculation, we do a lot of calculation, we bring in human factors into what we want to do. But projects should aim at the manifold, at declaring the manifold wisdom of God. That is when 
it captivates the people. That is when the people can embrace it. That is when they know that you have not come to Kajo there, but that it is God real. When you do a project and people are saying, no, this can only be God, because it is showing that it is God. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. And then projects should serve external purposes. Praise the Lord. Should do what? Serve external purposes. Projects should aim at beautifying lives. Wherever Jesus passed through, the, everyone Jesus came in contact with, they were never left as they were, except those who refused. When he was passing to Jericho, Bartholomew has, I don't know for how many years, he has been begging on the streets. But when Jesus passed through that place, he heard the voice of Jesus. He cried, the blind, the blind Bartholomew, the one who came to, to beg as a blind man, received his sight. It's not only that. Uh, 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 Zacchaeus life and home became beautiful. A rejected person, a person that was abhorred by his society because of his practices, by the passing of the Lord Jesus Christ, that life was changed. When, when Nehemiah reached Jerusalem, Jerusalem was not left as he, he met it. After 52 days in Jerusalem, Jerusalem became transformed. The lives of people became transformed. He brought people into real fellowship with God. He also saw the oppressions of people and elevated their problems. So projects should elevate problems. Projects should aim at delivering people. Projects should aim at beautifying people's life. Projects should aim. That is what the, that is what the eyes see, besides the spiritual. Those are the things the eyes see that make people to know that oh, there is a transformation. Project should 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 should, 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 should make people to understand. It should strengthen relationship. Project should strengthen relationship. Relationship between husband and wife, relationship between children, relationship between siblings, relationship even in the church of God, relationship outside the church of God. Projects you strengthen it. When you do a project and it causes fights in that community and they are now fighting themselves or they are arguing, and eh, my own was supposed to be uh, five kilograms of rice. Eh, they gave me only, uh, only three kilograms and it's causing the confusion then something must have been wrong with the execution of your project. Project should beautify lives. Project should bring people from the darkness into the marvelous light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Project should aim at improving the life of the individual. You don't do a project in a place without a, an, an improvement. That is why there should be follow-up. That is why there should be follow-up. That is why we must be interested in the people than in the execution of the projects. There are two things. You want to execute projects, particularly in these days of GTA project, where you have to submit your report. And so, oh, sisters will be going to so, so, so province to go and do this. And then quickly, we have written our report. We are submitting it. God is not interested in that. What God is interested in is how did you leave those people? And then there must be a follower. You must look at them. You must understand them. You must follow them up. You must know where you met them and where they are getting to. If we had, I take myself as a typical example. If where I was 25 years ago or almost 26 years ago now, when the Lord recruited me into the army of the willing women, if where I was, is still where I am, then people would have been asking me, what is the essence of this one that you are doing? But because there is a progress, there is a beautification, there is a relationship, there is project should remove some things from the life of people. There should be testimonies. Oh, before I used to get very angry, but after that project, I just discovered that now I can manage anger. That is a beauty in the life of the person. Projects should impart virtues. 
It's not just about giving food, about giving this. It should impart virtues in the life of people. Project is meant to do an external work in the life of the individual that today you are doing project with somebody, tomorrow that person can also become an executor of projects. Praise the Lord. So I want us to look at what, I don't know how to tie to it, but what I said is guidance, very essential in project execution. Guidance, very essential in, the, in project execution. In Psalm 48, verse 14, the, the Bible says, for this God is our God. We know it, we sing it. Psalm 48, verse 14, for this God is our God and forever it will be our guide. It is a song, it is a scripture. We all know this God is our guide. He's ready to guide us on a daily basis. But what is important is that are we ready to listen to him? God guides us through the Holy Spirit. In the past, he was guiding, according to the word of God in the book of Hebrew, he was guiding by the spirit of the prophet and intermittent uh, uh, appearance of the spirit of God. But in this season and in this dispensation, the only way, the genuine way of the Holy Spirit guiding us is guiding us by the Holy Spirit. I mean, of God guiding us is guiding us through the Holy Spirit. And so as a child of God, as somebody who is interested in GTA project, we must be ready to be guided by the Holy Spirit. However, we must be close to him in prayer if we are going to be guided by him. There's no compromise about this. God, he does not want us to do fire brigade that approach. Oh God, we want to do project, give us a project. That is not what God is looking for. No fire brigade approach, no occasional guiding. God wants it to be continuous. It is in the place of prayer. We had established that last week, that it is in the place of prayer. And so every one of us should go back to the closet. We need it. We, I need it. I need it. I need to go back to the closet. We need to go back to, to the closet. We need to know the Lord the more. We need to understand him. Having the Holy Spirit gives us the sense of being led by him. The Bible says to them that are his sons and daughters, those who are led by the Holy Spirit are the ones that are called by that are called the sons of God. So if you are not led by God, I mean by the Holy Spirit, you don't have a sense of being led by him. You are not a son. And I thank God for teachers like Professor Anibogo, teachers like Dr. Abubako, our dad, Daddy Ogan, they have taught us so much about who sons are. Are you a son? Then you must be guided by the Holy Spirit. And guided by the Holy Spirit is not only when you want to preach. It is even, it is more important when you want to execute projects. So having the sense of being led by him, we must be careful not to rely on our creativity. Please let us bear this in mind. Don't rely on your creativity. Oh, that sister is very creative. Fine. Please, I am not disputing the fact that your creativity is important, but don't rely on it for projects. Don't rely on your efficiency. Maybe you are a career person, a well-trained career person. And so anytime you want to do something, you just bring the idea of your career into it. It is good. But first of all, be led by the Holy Spirit because the ways of God are not your way. God, I, we have talked about the manifold wisdom of God. God is not looking for your, for your wisdom. He's looking for you exhibiting his wisdom. When you pack God's wisdom and you are exhibiting your prayers, God is no longer there. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. We must be careful not to rely on our creativity, efficiency, and human knowledge, etc., for GTA project. God has a plan and a purpose for every life, not doing what he wants, no matter how beautiful what you are doing is, makes us a sub-Christian. That was what one preacher said, that if you are not doing 
what God really wants. If you are, that God has a plan, He has a purpose. If He gives you an echo, He already has a plan of how to do it. So, so to rise up and say, Yes, He said this one. I was in a, an orphanage home. I had worked with an orphanage home. So I understand how it is done. That is not God. Your efficiency without God's direction is nonsense and makes you a sub Christian. If that is sub Christianity, a full Christian person will listen to God. How do you want this? Because God does not do two things the same way. Everything God wants to do is unique. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Project execution will not fail if we find plan of God and work with it. We must look for the plan of God and work with it. If we want to execute project, we should always bear in mind that we did not choose God, but rather he chose us. John 15, 16. My dear mothers, you did not choose God. God chose you. You did not choose to be a widow. You did not choose to be a Christian that you are. That leadership position that you are holding, you did not choose it. God chose you. If he did not choose you, where will you be? And so if you have that mentality, that you were not chosen, you, you did not choose God. It is God that cho chose you. You are going to have a sense of being sent. That is one sense that we must carry in GTA project, that we are sent on assignment, that we are sent. It is not that, oh, when I looked at everything, I decided, no, you are sent. I am sent. This one that I'm shouting this morning, I am sent. If the one who sends me does not tell me what to do, whatever I do is a waste of your time and a waste of purpose. I must have that sense that I'm being sent. And if I'm being sent, I must listen to the instructions that I am given. You must listen to the instructions. You must walk by the instructions. If they send you a message, and then you go to the place and you now go and deliver the message the way you think it should be. You are running a risk. You are not obedient. You are not working for the person who sent you. And having a sense of being sent, having, understanding that you were are, you are chosen, you did not choose God, We also give you a sense of obligation to surrender and be obedient unto him. You must have that sense of obligation it is not something you do like adesically. It is not something you do as you want. It is not something you determine on your own when to do it and how to do it. No, we cannot go this weekend because this weekend will be too something for me. I have already got a plan. Leaders, I am addressing us. Let us all, all know that it is obligatory to do it as God wants. And then... Having this sense of obligation shows that we must be obedient. We must be obedient. We celebrate our mothers in wedding women today. We love them. We celebrate them because they were obedient to the call of God. I, I thank God that they responded on that May 8th. If they did not respond, would there be a global move like this? It was a project. Let's look at it very well. They responded. So obedience is with a sense of obligation, with an urgency in your heart that you must do it as God wants. That is the only way. Fearfully and obediently, I mean, fearfully, promptly obeying God and surrendering completely unto him. In, in GTA project, guidance is not a one-time of occasional, uh, occasional thing. It must be continuous. It's not that uh, we have men, we have prayed. The Holy Spirit said we should go to London and do this one. When we get to London, we did. No. The Holy Spirit said go to London. When you get to London, you must tell him that, Daddy, we have arrived. This is London. What should we do next? It's not the one you now bring your idea, your human, your knowledge. Uh, things are expensive here, so we must cut it short. I, 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 in, in, in my work, in, in, in the, in the days that I've spent in the wedding room, I have seen God scolding. I have seen God. This is me that I'm talking. I have seen God scolding me, weeping with my people. 
We have seen God scolding us because we got to a place we forgot about. It's not that we forgot. We use human knowledge to decide on where to stay. We wanted to conserve food. And then as soon as the uh, opportunity came from the, from the devil, we did not analyze it. We just pack our bag and baggage. Say, hey, free food, free housing is better than to stay in hotel. And our journey would have been wasted if not that God was merciful unto us. We packed our load and we ran as if, uh, uh, as if they were chasing us. So projects, we must be ready to wait on God for guidance every time. Don't introduce human knowledge. Don't introduce economy of man. Don't introduce psychology of man. Wait on God. It is not a one-off thing. It must be occasional. Bear in mind that God guides the humble. That's another thing. If you are proud, the Bible says God abhors the proud. In fact, it looks at them from far off. The only people God will guide are those people who know nothing. They are the people who do not know anything. The simple, the people that are ready to humble themselves. The Lord will help us in Jesus' day. There's a need to walk in the world with a sense of mission. If we must, if you must execute GTA project, you must have a sense of mission. I say it to everybody. If you have not found something you can die for, you don't have a reason to live. And life significance is seriously determined by what it is identified with and what it represents. What does your life represent? What does my life what represent? What, I, what do I identify with? What can I be identified with? What will, what will people say? Oh, no matter what, we know that uh, <laughs> the BC, uh, as far as that one is concerned, you, you can't take it away from her. Then you have a sense. You have a significance for life. Let us search for what is significant to us. Let us not deceive ourselves. We are all in the GTA. But what is the significance of your life? Because life significance is determined by what life is attached to, by what life is identified with. What are you, what is your identity? That will also determine your ability to surrender unto God. That will also determine your obedience. That will also determine your humility. If your if 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 your identity is pride. If your identity is self-seeking, if you want to be hard and seen at every time, you will pervert projects so that you can be seen. Do you know that you can have an echo? And I thank God for those who are having echoes in their heart now. You can have an echo in your heart, but you may not be the significant person that will be raised to perform it. You don't need to get angry. It was me that suggested it. And later when they were doing it, the trade coordinator just took it from me. She did not take it from you. God directed it to be done that way. Your own is that every little assignment you are given to do, do it with the whole of your strength. And if you don't have any assignment at all to do physically, be on your knees praying for those who have assignment to do. God glorify you. I mean, God glorify himself in you in Jesus' name. A sense of mission makes you a, 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 a real Christian. If you don't have a sense of mission, you can't be a real Christian. And nobody, no Christian with a sense of mission will not be humble because a sense of mission humbles you. If you say, oh, if you think you have a sense of mission and you are proud, you don't have it. A sense of mission humbles you because the work is too light for you. You can't see yourself fit, I mean, fixing into, fixing into that purpose. It is difficult. But when you already see that you can fix into it, and in fact, you can take more, huh? caution yourself, go back to God and say, God, this is pride, help me. I want to say to you that everybody has the tendency to be proud. Let's not deceive ourselves. The devil puffs up, up, us up. Accomplishment puffs us up. But what you do when the devil puffs you up is what is most important. A sense of mission should humble you. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. God, through the Holy Spirit, directs the humble. If you must be guided, 
you must be humble. Guidance demands submission. Please, to be guided is to be submissive. God will not come and pluck you from the high top three where you have placed yourself on the pinnacle, where you have showed that, yes, it is me that can do it, and then come and force you and say, look, I want to guide you. Uh, BC, I must guide you. No. It is when you bring yourself down and you will say to you, your will be done, and you are saying it with all sincerity that is ready to guide you. May the Lord give us the sense of submission in Jesus' name. We cannot be guided. I mean, we can be guided in different ways. There are different ways God guides us. But the most important thing is for you and I to train our ears, our spiritual ears, to hear God's guidance so that as echoes are coming, you are not rushing at it. You are not concluding emotionally. You are not concluding because you know. You are not concluding because of the experiences you have seen. These things are important. But I want to say that there's a guide that streamlines everything if you submit to God. If you submit your set. Do you know why we have problems? Why we execute some projects and they are not we are not able to execute them because we introduce sense, human sense. We introduce human economy. That is one is very common. Ah, God said we should go to so, 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 so. Hey, how much will it cost? Ah, if that is the case, how can four people go? Let us, I am thinking that we should make it to people so that we can conserve money. Have you asked God? If it's, it is a project, I keep on saying it. If it is his project, and if actually we walk by his guidance, as he's telling us, and we understand his purposes, I want to say categorically that he is not a tax master. He will not give you a project that he has not made provisions for. Look at Nehemiah. There was already provision. Look at Joseph in the land of Egypt, there was already provision. He waited on the wisdom of God. The dark project failed. For seven years of plenty and seven years of famine, there was no failure because he was using God's wisdom. And by using God's wisdom, that's one thing I want us to establish as I think of that project of Joseph. By using God's wisdom to do, show the manifold wisdom of God, what happened? Even the king of Egypt, who does not have any relationship with the God of the Israel, of the Israelite, bowed before God. He brought, he brought Moses, I mean, Joseph brought that king into fellowship with God, shows the manifold wisdom of God. I can we can continue to identify and analyze what most I mean, Joseph's project in the land of Egypt accomplished. He gave opportunity for the children of Israel to be for a nation to be formed. Hmm. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. It is that project that gave opportunity for the nation Israel to be raised inside Egypt. The purpose of God. The purpose of God. The purpose of God. It brought external beauty. There is nothing. It beautified the people. It, it, it faced hunger and fresh the mountain of hunger. It benefited the people around. That was how Jacob and his family got in contact with it. I pray that the Holy Spirit will help us. Everything about this training is about these echoes. What we are doing today or what we have learned today is what the Holy Spirit ministered so that our echoes can be in line with the purpose of God so that we can execute, incubate and execute those echoes to fulfill purpose. May the Lord bless each and every one of us. May this training not be in vain in your life and in mine. May, may we all be, be greatly impacted 
not even me that I'm talking. I want to say to you that I need this impartation. I need this prayer that I will not just be a talker, but I will be a drawer of the word of God. That this thing will be manifested in my life as it is manifested in every other person's life. If we scrutinize our lives, ourselves, we may find ourselves indicted. Me, I'm severally indicted, even by the things I'm teaching. But I'm asking God to please help me. I don't know about you. May the Lord bless us in Jesus' name.